Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. I know what you're thinking. This wig is pretty sweet. But no, I finished the book. So now I'm on to the hit TV show adaptation of it. It's pretty sweet. Oh, this? Yeah. Well, I still need to get a handle on this sword. I guess that's why you're here. To see me get a handle on the situation. A handle? You get it? All right, everybody, we're back. And like we're saying, it's time to put a handle on this <clears throat> fantasy sword. <clears throat> cough, cough. For this handle, I have squirreled away these two pieces of some kind of burl that's been stabilized green. I don't remember, that's how long I've had them, for like six months. Boom, S boom, spacer. This guard is gonna kind of be in a V shape with a little step down, you know, a little lightning. It's totally original. You've definitely never seen it anywhere. We're gonna have two twisted hippo heads up here at the top, you know, school of the hippo, obviously, if you, you know, have seen anything about fantasy novel. Uh, so yeah, I have to make up some pattern welded Damascus steel. I've got some 1095 and 15 and 20. It should be plenty to make the guard and make the hippo heads. Um, because there's such a small surface area, I'm not really shooting for a specific pattern because you probably wouldn't be able to detect it. Uh, well, I might end up twisting it because uh, the hippo heads are kind of going to get twisted anyway. But there's going to be hopefully a lot of detail, especially in the carving of those heads. So the pattern it might just fight me on that, if that makes sense. Sometimes with Damascus, you kind of just have to let it stand as is. And the more you etch into it, like laser or engrave or runes or wh whatever, whatever you have, um, it can just kind of detract and you're, you're kind of seeing too much with your eyes. And you're like, ugh. First thing, make the steel, hammer out the guard, make kind of a log for these hippos, like a big old turd. And then I'm gonna, I'm no stranger to carving hippo heads out of steel, which isn't a lot of fun, by the way, but I've never done two, and it'll be interesting how it's gonna sit right here on the end of the tang, and if that's gonna go through and get peened, but then their heads are there, and I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but we'll come to that bridge when we come to it. So, without further ado, let's get started. So it's pretty thick, but I'm gonna try to twist it.
thick. All right, so we have our big steel turd. Uh, because I used such thin stock, it was at 60 layers to begin with, which I think is a good amount of layers for this. It'll be a decent contrast. Um, went ahead and twisted it so it didn't look just like stacked up. There's actually some movement in it. Uh, so yeah, at first I was like, man, I'm not gonna have enough for the hippo heads and for the guard, but now I think I'm gonna be just fine. I think I was overthinking how big this pummel twisted hippo head thing is gonna be. Uh, so I'll probably have enough. I just gotta be careful. I don't go in and make a cut and then draw that out and realize there's not enough on the other cut that has happened. So uh, portioning out your material correctly, definitely something you wanna do, do the math. And uh, let's parcel this thing out. Let's pinch off this turd, you know what I'm saying? Oh!
that's fun. And wearing a different shirt. We got a mustache now, a hat. It's almost like time marches ever onward, forever. This handle section where the guard is going on, got the guard all milled out. So I'm ready to attach that, do all the fine fitting up. Um, I guess, but first, I gotta bend that thing. I gotta make the... Move on to the pummel. We'll just take it one section at a time. So I've really reached an impasse here. I'm ready to put these handle pieces on, uh, get them glued up, uh, and then finish out the pommel. The age-old question here is, do I screw this pommel on? Do I thread these threads and thread up into the pommel, screw it on, or do I peen it with these double hippo heads here, right? Every Witcher sword that I found on the internet, the heads are twisted. 
Um, so it would be a shame not to do that. It would bother me for sure. Uh, but if I do that, you know, if I cut down the center and I kind of curl them around each other, uh, doing like a through and a peen, this is probably not gonna really work. You know, there'll be that weird indentation and then they're not actually one piece, they're split. Even though they're touching, you know, doing a peen is just, I, I don't see how that would work if, if they're twisted. But if I keep them like this, sort of like a T, do my carvings, you know, try to separate them, maybe do a little bit of creative grinding and shaping to uh, make it look a little twisted. I mean, it still look cool, but then it could come through, have some tang, poke out the top, peen that down right here in the center, that would be a little bit lower. Because, you know, especially if you have kind of shoulders like up here, and then it's a piece of thread, and the thread usually isn't all that thick. Um, it just creates a point where vibration will kind of end right there, and you got this heavy pummel, and the you know the tang's only going like halfway up it. So uh, yes, it's it's threaded tight in the sense of you know you're never going to be able to pull that off. But if you're thinking about whacking the sword on stuff, and there's a lot of vibration and tor torque and stuff happening. Um, the fact that it's only partially up in there and it's like really thin and threaded down um, it just doesn't make sense in that dynamic movement you know and, and again I know I'm not an expert and I know a lot of people are fine with doing threads and I'm sure they had great success but I am really racking my brain over this these are the kind of choices um, because I would hate to not do the twist in the heads and then be like upset with myself later and be looking at it and just be like, man, I should have done it. Um, but I also want it to be strong, you know? I want this thing to actually be put to use and I don't want this big heavy pummel to snap off and then I'm like totally embarrassed. Uh, and peening is, correctly, is really, you know, you have a mechanical connection all the way through. That's the strongest thing you can do, uh, at least in my opinion. You know, there's a lot of opinions. The sword is finally done, but if you thought I was gonna be slicing and dicing, well, not quite yet. That's right, I've got one more video planned for this series. We're making a, I'm making a very uh, intricate scabbard for this thing. A little leather, a little laser action, a little Damascus uh, fittings. I don't even know what they're called on a scabbard. I haven't even done the research yet, so I gotta get to work. Because once this thing is totally complete, at the end of part three, we're going to go hog wild and we're going to slay some monsters. So, you don't want to miss that. Uh, get, give me a little bit of time to get that together. In the meantime, I'm sure there'll be some other videos out, some other cool projects that I have planned. Stick around. I am a one-man band, after all. Let me go uh, meditate, get my potions and bombs and all my oils ready, and then it's on to part three. So. Until next time, thanks for watching everybody.